Greetings, it's time for another Pony Panels, and this time, it's Friends Forever. Now, through three noted episodes, For Whom the Sweetie Belle Tolls, Bloom and Gloom, and, of course, Sleepless in Ponyville, the Kitty Mark Crusaders, through their journey to get their marks, had three noted interactions with Princess Luna. Why do I bring this up? Because that's the subject of the Lightest Friends Forever comic. A pairing of the two. Luna and the CMC feel like a natural mentor young ones match. And oddly enough, that's what this comic is about. Mentoring. The whole situation is funny enough. Equestria is supposed to have a sleepover, which Luna doesn't know what sleepovers actually are, with Princess Celestia. But when a peace negotiation goes real bad, Celestia is sent off, sent off to deal with the problem. Griffins and yaks, by the way. The two most anger-inducing, unagreeable races in Equestria. Imagine that. So, so, instead of canceling the planned sleepover, Luna unwittingly and, and unknowingly takes over, despite Luna being very vocal about it. See, seeing that she brings fear Instead of comfort. Also, callbacks to Luna's constant antisocial and anti connectable reasons. In fact, there's a subtle fourth wall break in the comic referencing how much people want to see Luna in things and not so much Celestia. And every time that Luna goes away for a quote-unquote sabbatical, we wonder where she is. <laughs> it's a, it's rather subtle, but the line sticks out, sticks out openly on a page, and is a nice nod to the rest of us. Plus, there's a Harry Potter reference, wide open. Plus. There's also a lot of references to other episodes, too. Via Twilight, who is there temporarily in the comic, comic as more of an, as more of just having fun being in the situation until the plot actually starts, in which Luna insists in her own special way that she got this. But what quickly, quickly becomes Luna learning the ins and outs of sleepovers, i.e. look before you sleep, beco becomes quickly overshadowed by another plot via three young fillies that are over at the sleepover. Buttercup, Buttercup. Rowdy Rousey, which obviously is a play on Ronda Rousey, famous former UFC champ, and Dressa. See, the other two aren't, aren't necessarily friends with the young unicorn. In fact, they pick on her a lot, and it finally gets to her. As Luna frantically searches for the, for the young one to try to keep her s slumber party from going off the rails, like look before you sleep, a new magical creature is introduced, a Mira Orca. Mira Orcas are totally magically immune, <laughs> seeing that their body naturally is a Name implies is made by mirrors, but it's but it's due to the special talent 
talent of the young Thressa that the solution is made. And this might be the freakiest talent of any talent I've seen a pony ever have. She can make your skeleton appear inside out. Yeah, it's more of a Halloween parlor trick, but it actually works works out here and the mirror orca, orca is destroyed which leads leads to the moral of the tale just because you don't think you have the capabilities abilities to be a mentor because you're a little out there out there and different may actually be the reason you have the qualities to be a mentor because it's oftentimes, oftentimes when groups of dramatic differences are paired because they're outcasts, that there are some commonalities to be had. And helping a fellow outcast who's lost in their role to find their role can be fulfilling for both parties both mentally and spiritually. There's also some classic CMC comedy thrown in and by the way this is noted by the comic cover that you'll see for the thumbnail. The first comic in which the CMC have their cutie marks in it. So obviously this is post lost mark for the first time. And, naturally, the Cutie Mark Crusaders play their new role, role as, as Cutie Mark understanders perfectly in this comic, while still allowing, allowing Luna and her antisocial quirks to shine and the main moral of the play out. So, the pairing is done perfectly. Perfectly with with striking looks and in expressions that only the comics can provide, and even with the times with Luna and Celestia in the comic comic, you can see their sisterly care and dynamic on display, as well as Cele Celestia's dedication to things already planned. And an almost heartbroken attitude that you have to run off and do something Im totally important. It, it makes sense and is a perfect reason to set the plot in motion. Friends Forever, as I've continued to read them, has been getting better with time. The last four Friends Forever have been excellent, and this one... This one is no exception, just like the episodes therein. In the group of four do excellent in their roles together, and it seems they have a lot to learn together, which makes it all the better. That's why Friends Forever 28 gets a five. Out of six. Slip shot drawings and and some mistime lines can can ruin the comic and the ending and the lack of the use of the boys, especially at the end, bring it down a peg. But it's still a great read. Until next time. Find peace in your own nirvana. And thanks for watching.